Okay, so we're trying to answer the question that you see over here. Um, okay, let's take a look at our video for a minute. Uh, and in, in the video I have here the question, the question is, In a jar, 55 coins, only quarters and dimes, total 610, how many of each coin? The first idea is relate the idea that the quarters plus the dimes is 55, as you see here. The next idea is relate the dollar amounts, the, the values of the coin, and make it total the amount. These two equations are what you need to solve the question. Remember that when you use Desmos, they look like Q or D, they like X and Y. So if we go to Desmos, what we would do is we would just go right in and put them in, but with the X and Y that way. Which is what you're looking at right here, right? And uh, we put the two equations in, here they are, we see where they cross, and this is kind of important, this does not appear immediately. You kind of have to hover around it and then it appears and then you have to click it and then it's there. And then after you click it, then it tells you what the points are. We can assume that there were four quarters and 51 dimes. Now, according to Polly, you're supposed to look back. So let's look back, does that make sense? Four quarters makes $1, 51 dimes makes Five dollars and ten cents, and if I add them, doesn't doesn't that work? I get six dollars and ten cents. So that's another thing about Polya is you got to look back, and you have to write some kind of sentence or short paragraph saying, "And I went back and checked, and it does make sense because four quarters plus fifty-one dimes does make six dollars and ten cents." That's what we mean by Polya. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. Um, I do not expect to be able to finish our PowerPoint today. It's a little bit long, long because it's supposed to span over a couple of weeks. But we do want to get through one more question that has to do with heights and fractions, and then we're going to stop for the day. Okay, guys. So let's take a look now at the um, PowerPoint. And again, here you're looking at Polly's principles. So um, we're, uh, we're we understand the problem. We know it's about coins. We devise a plan. We're going to make up equations. We're going to carry out the plan, and then we're going to look back now. That's the way that we're doing it as an, as an adult. Let's try to look at this question through the eyes of a child. Look at this question through the eyes of a child. As a teacher, you have to constantly put yourself in the place of that child and think about how, what are my resources as a child? Have I done a lot with graphing? Have I done a lot with algebra? Really, I haven't. What's the easiest way to answer a question like this? It's algebra and Desmos, but they're not gonna have that at their fingertips. So. Let's take a look at what the average kid would do when they were come, coming across a question like this. And now we're gonna go back to the old one that has different figures, the amount is 370 and it's nickels and uh, dimes. Look at what this student did. This student said, okay, well, if it's 40 coins, maybe it's zero nickels and 40 dimes, it might be one nickel and 39 dimes, it could be two nickels and 38 dimes and so on. And we could kind of jump around. How about if it's 10 nickels and 30 dimes? Why would they do this? This does seem like a lot of work, but then again, really it's not. Um, and it's not bad for the kids to be thinking about money and counting and adding and things like that. But as you do it, you'll notice that we have numbers coming out here. We have one that could be $4, this one is $3.95. Notice I'm trying to get to three seventy, dollars right? So as I carry on here, this one's gonna be $3.90 and it's gonna carry on down that way, you know? And so since that be the case, well, how far do we need to go? Let's try 10. What happens at 10? Well, at 10, we go below 370. So you will see kids answering questions like this about the jar and the coins using a table like this, carrying out every possible scenario of how many nickels and how many dimes. This is a very practical and appropriate way for kids to figure out the answer to a question where you have a jar full of coins. I want you, as an instructor with a bachelor's degree, to be able to look at this question, use algebra and get a quick answer, not even use algebra, but more so even use technology like Desmos to get a quick answer. You know right off the bat what the answer is and how many coins of each kind there are. A child will draw a, a table like this to try to get your answers. So when it comes to doing these on the test, I don't care how you do them as long as you know how to get the answer. Then when you're a teacher in the classroom, it'll be up to you how you deliver the lesson and how you help your students learn you will be asking them to make tables like this because it's a regular part of your um, standardized testing and what they're expected to do. When the, the child makes a table like this, they're also exercising quantitative reasoning. And you could also apply Polly's principles to this, uh, which is devise a plan. Here's a plan. 
let's make a table and do every scenario. There's only 40 scenarios, right? And I don't have to do all of them, only the ones that lead me to think about what the next appropriate thing would be. Like when I did 10, I knew that was too far, so it's probably seven or eight for nickels. Let's try seven, let's try eight and see what we get and experiment until you get one. And then look back and make sure your answer makes sense. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do one more question and then we're gonna end our class for today. As usual, thank you so much for your close attention. This one is about sculptures. So let's read through this one. And we're also gonna look at a couple of children's drawings that are associated with this particular question. So we get a feel of what it'll be like when we get our, uh, when we collect our assignments and start doing some grading, okay? This is called problem one. It came from page 18 in your textbook. Two sculptures are similar. The height of one sculpture is two and a half times the height of the other sculpture. The taller sculpture is three feet tall. So how, the smaller sculpture, excuse me, is three feet tall. So how tall is the larger sculpture? Okay, now you might be able to see as an adult th that we're in a group together and this is higher education, we know what to do, right? You're supposed to multiply, right? Are you supposed to do two and a half times three? Yeah, that would be the answer. And we already know how to do that quick and painless. It should be seven and a half. Bingo, seven and a half is the answer. Good to know. But not every child is going to see that because the children, aren't, haven't gone through as many classes as you have, haven't studied algebra the way that you have, don't have the mind of a teacher that you have. So you have to be able to present this to them in other ways, and you have to be accepting and understanding of their work when they try their very hardest to do it. Here's what one child drew based on this question. And if you look closely, you could criticize this in a lot of different ways. You could say, look how ridiculous the third figure looks like a praying mantis. I mean, you, you know, but you have to remember, this kid tried very, very hard to do the best they could to answer the question. And by the way, the kid answered the question. It's a good answer. It's seven and a half. It's right there. They thought with a different kind of reasoning than you did. And to make matters even more challenging, they thought with a different kind of reasoning than all 20 of your other kids in your class. But it's on you to have your own teaching ability to look at this and say, is this a passing assignment or not? I'm gonna say certainly, and not only that, I'm gonna go and talk to the student and say, you did a wonderful job with those drawings. Please make sure you continue that. Keep on making the drawings. When you make drawings, it gets you to the right answer. Look, you explained very clearly, you added half of three feet. You found out that half of that is one and a half. You have seven and one and a half, and you have, it's all very clearly written. There are some things you might have been able to do better, but for the most part, when it comes to word problems, you have to be kind of lenient and let them. This is a great example because we have a very strange looking figure here. You know, So just keep that in mind. The kids try the best they can, and what really matters is they got the answer, and they are showing crit critical thinking here, that they've done uh, a little bit of a process. They have something of a plan. In it. And also you can look back with this, like Polya, you can look back and say, does that make sense, seven and a half? Yeah, it does, because if I look back, it's three and then six and then a half more and so on. That's what we mean by using Polya. Uh, this last question I'm gonna leave for you guys. And when we get together again, which will be on Wednesday, I'll go over this in depth with you. So this question came out of your textbook also, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint of what the, the child drew for this. If you look at this picture of what the child drew, again, you might be misconstruing it. The first thing I see when I look at this question is, oh, this kid's drawing a box. This looks like a three-dimensional figure. To me, the first thing I think is this is a box, maybe like a Coca-Cola cans box, right? It's got the thing, the flaps pop down, but it's not that. This is the child saying, this measurement is 200 inches. This measurement is 12 inches. And if you look at it again, it's like, wait a minute, no, it's not. It's a good rectangle and it totally explains. It's not about three-dimensional figures. It's not about a box. It's just the way the child drew it. So we're gonna end here with this question. I'm gonna ask you to spend the next 10 minutes or so of class trying to interpret this question, trying to answer it cold without looking at the kid's drawing. See if you can get the answer um, and mess around a little bit. Uh, we'll leave that there. When we get together on Wednesday, we'll open class with going over this question. All right? Now, um, I do just wanna talk a little bit to you. And so let me change my camera over and say hello again to my class here, uh, Structures of Math students, my future teachers. Hello, everybody. So thank you so much for coming to class today. We had a couple of little technical difficulties with the Zoom meeting and, uh, you know, not a big deal. We started a little tiny bit late, but, you know, I don't like to rush and we have time. So we're doing well. Everybody's on track. Uh, and this is a great time now. We're done with class and we're about to dismiss. I still have to take attendance. 
So once I take attendance and I say class dismissed, then you're free to log off. If you want to stick around and ask other questions or bring other ideas to the table, questions from WebAssign are welcome. Uh, I'll be sticking around after class as well today, so um, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, let's take a minute and take attendance, and then we're going to dismiss. And again, guys, thanks so much for your attention. I keep plugging away with that WebAssign. Okay? We'll take attendance, and then we'll open for questions. Okay, everybody, I did just take attendance and we are officially dismissed. There is one thing I wanted to mention, I forgot. Uh, somebody sent me an email about the syllabus quiz and that the syllabus quiz locked on them. Um, and I'm gonna extend the syllabus quiz. For those of you who did not finish the syllabus quiz in time, it did close last night, but that's okay. It's 5% of your grade. I'm gonna extend it for another week. Please make sure you do it. It's very crucial that you read the syllabus and you're familiar with it. And uh, I don't want anybody to feel like they missed the chance to do that. So. Um, full credit, there won't be any penalty. Uh, we're gonna reopen it and it will close. You can assume it will close on September the 15th, which is next Tuesday. Uh, but um, guys, please try to do it today and get it over with. Um, and other than that, if there are any questions, now is the right time. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open the floor to questions. Anyone have anything to share, any questions? I have a question, a web is on question. Let okay, me open the chat. <laughs> oh, in the chat, okay, good. Let's turn on the microphone, yeah. let's do that. Okay, good. Uh, Amelia, right? Hi. Hi. Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. All right. That's good to hear. Let's see if in the chat what your question is, and I'll see if I can help you answer it, okay? Um, I'm opening chat. I could not figure this out. Like, I thought Aww. it was so easy, but, like, I did, like, every possible thing I could think of, and no, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, pro no problem. I'm going to help you with it. Okay. I'll help you with it right now. Okay. Uh, let's see, in the chat. Can you see okay. it? Um, Kali? <laughs> Look at these silly names, Kali. Calle means street in Spanish, Calle, right? Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, Calle had three times as many stickers as Sarah did and twice as many as Juniper did. Juniper had 15. Wait, I lost it. How? Many stickers did they have all together? Okay, so um, I keep on, it keeps on jumping this chip. Let me open the chat all the way. There you go, now I can see it. Um, all right, Kaye had three times as many stickers as Sarah 
and as Sarah did, and twice as many as Juniper did, and Juniper had five. Okay, here's where we're, here's what we're gonna do, guys. All right, Wait, we have three quantities, right? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I actually have the answer to that. So uh, Juniper would have fifteen stickers. Sarah would have ten. So it says that Juniper has fifteen stickers. Uh huh. And Callie has two times as many stickers as Juniper. So you need to figure out how many um, stickers that Kaya has instead of Jupiter. So you take 15 times two, because she has twice as many, and you get 30. Okay. Um, Callie has three times as many stickers as Sarah. So you divide that by three, and you get 10. Okay, I like it. I like it. Now, when you did that, you did that kind of with your yes. own quantitative reasoning, right? There wasn't any algebra in that. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and I see where you came up with that. Now, not everybody will be able to see it that way. To be honest, I didn't see it that way. And that's very clever of you that you came up with it that way. Um, yeah, that's definitely the problem because it kind of gives, it helps give you an answer if you just look at Tuna Press 15 and then you read the first some part. Yeah, you know what? That's where I was kind of going to go with it. You know, I was going to start by thinking about how Juniper had 15. Uh, what's the previous? I mean, it was worded weirdly, in my opinion, because I'm like here, like, uh, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I just saw it. And I was like, Kaye had three times as many stickers as Sarah did and twice as many as Juniper. Like, did, did Kaye have twice as many as Sarah and Juniper or just Juniper? Like, I, it was really, it was just mm -hmm. really weird. And it's also uh, a little bit confusing because it's three quantities. You know, that's three yeah. things. Let me share with you some little tip tips that may help you also. Um, Notice that we're comparing Kaye to Sarah and then we're comparing Kaye to Juniper, right? But when we compare Kaye to Juniper, we already know Juniper is 15. So what we don't know is Sarah. So one of the things that they talk about in the quantitative reasoning is to try to identify the unknown. The unknown this time is actually Sarah. Because if we know Sarah, then we know everything else. After I have labeled Sarah the X, everything else comes out to be much easier. Kaye had three times as many stickers as Sarah, right? And Kaye oh. happened to also have twice as many as Jupiter, so, Juniper. So doesn't that mean that the three X is the same as 30 then, right? And now you have this little idea, and this is what Lily was talking about, how it's three times, so it must be 10. See that? Now she was kind of seeing that in her mind, uh, Wait, whereas so I kind of times fifteen, three times fifteen is thirty. Because you know it says it's twice as many as juniper. It's twice as many as this. That's why it's a thirty. But it's three times as much as Sarah. Sarah was X. Oh, okay. You know what it is, Amelia. The grammar is horrible, and it's yeah. deliberately very confusing that way, and that's why you might feel. Uh, like it's hard to see it, you know? Um, but but one thing that will always save you, one thing that'll always save you with questions like this is, ask yourself, what is the, the thing that is unknown that if I knew it, I'd be able to get everything else in this time, that's Sarah. Mm -hmm. Ironically, it's not Kaye. You think it's Kaye, but it's Sarah. Because if you knew Sarah, then you knew Kaye because we're telling you Kaye is three times Sarah, three X. Kaye is twice Juniper. We didn't even need to know about Juniper. You could have told me Kaye is 30. It's the same as saying twice as this. It's, just, it's 30. And then the, 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 um, the critical thinking leap is writing this equation. And then wow. yeah, you get that. That's X, so that's Sarah. So if that's Sarah, and you know that Kaya has three times Sarah has 30, and you know that Juniper has 15, then don't forget to answer the question. The question is how many stickers do they have, right? So you got to do 30 plus 10 plus 15, right? 55. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know what it's like, Amelia? It's like one of those compound sentences that has two predicates. Kaye has this and Kaye has this, you know? <laughs> like look at it like two sentences that that might help a little bit too, you know? Yeah, it was just kind of really weird in my opinion. I was like trying to do it and then I was like dividing. I don't know what I was doing. I just just could not understand it. And then I started dividing things. I don't know. I don't know what I did. It was just really hard to, hard. I just kind of skipped it all together. I feel you. <laughs> Believe me, I completely understand 
I've totally been there so many times and I know it, it, you just start to go yeah. a little bit cross-eyed looking at it and you know um so I'm glad you brought it to us and thank you for sharing that question do you have any others do you have any other questions to talk about yes okay Let's um it was this one about Anya and B okay um here's the first part uh Coming to you now, I was like, what? Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me read it. Okay, let me read it. All right. I like that you put the Enya in there. Very good. Very good. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> no, I just did control V. <laughs> oh, you copied it. Okay. Yeah, you know what I mean, the tilde. <laughs> okay. Uh, the last part of one triathlon is a 10K run. When Anya starts, you know what, this is, it's hard to read it in the chat. Okay, there you go. All right, let me try it again. The last part of one triathlon is 10 kilometers. When Anya starts this last running part, she is 600 meters behind runner B. But Anya can run faster than B. Anya can run on average 220 meters per minute. And B can run on average 200 meters per minute. Who wins, Anya or B? If Anya wins, when does she catch up with B if B wins? How far behind is Anya when she finishes? Okay, those last two questions are gonna be easy to answer after we figure out the, the meat of the question, right? So let's leave those alone for a minute. And let's look at if one part of the triathlon is 10 meters, right? The last part. So here's what we'll do. We'll begin by drawing, let me make sure that you can see what I'm writing. Hold on, do I have my camera on? Yes, okay, you can see, all right. Mm -hmm. So let's begin by drawing, uh, we have Anya and B, right? So I'm gonna give you Anya's path. I'm going to give you B's path, right? And now Anya's path you see how it says the last part of the triathlon is 10,000 meters? So what's happening is we're not concerned with the first pieces of it. We're only going to be concerned with the last part. So both of them are running the last part right now and it's 10,000 meters. Right? All right. Now, when Anya starts the last running part, that means when Anya's right here, right? She's 600 meters behind B. This is 10,000 meters. Let's remember. Let me write it out. 10,000 meters. Here, there is a moment where she is at place zero and she's at place 600. Does that look like that makes sense? I thought she was behind. Like, I thought it honestly, when I, when I read this question, what I was visualizing in my mind was that, like, Anya was. Like, like X is zero, but like, if you go back, it was like negative 600 or something. Like that's what I- You can I look just... at it like that too. Yeah, you can definitely look at it like that too. Like if you make this B, you could say it's B minus 600 up here. You know, that's one way to look at it. You could think of it that way too. There's a couple ways mm -hmm. to look at it. I'm trying to think of it the way a child would. You know, let's make it, try to do it the easiest way you can. Or in other words, the way mm -hmm. that requires the least requires the least critical thinking kind of is the, the, the way you want to think about it, you know? Yeah. So if it's telling you now that Anya can run faster than B, Anya can run 22 meters per minute. So Anya has a rate of 22 meters per minute, 220 meters per minute. We also know that B can run 200 per minute. Okay, so who wins? Now, we could do this in a lot of different ways. The way the child is going to do it is they're going to do it minute by minute. We could play the game of D equals RT, right? And you could go back to your algebra class and, and come up with equations for this, or you could just do it minute by minute. Let's try that. In the first minute, what happens is Anya gets to 220. And what happens is B gets to 600, uh, 800. Does that look like it makes sense the first minute? Uh, Did I lose wait. you? I think yeah, I lost you. Yeah, you lost me. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm let's, confused. Let's, let's start again, okay? Let's start again. We're in a position where Anna is standing at the beginning of the last 10,000 and B is 600 into it, right? Mm -hmm. In one minute, Anya goes 220 meters per minute. So in one minute, Anya is here. Oh, so it's 600 plus 200. Okay. Right, because now yeah. B's rate is mm -hmm. 200. So B is 800 now. Okay, we carry on. 
What happens at the third minute? Doesn't B get there? B gets there on the third minute. Oh no, it's 10,000, not 10,000. So now she's there, and now this person is at 440, right? Yeah. Okay, so now let's start with a new table. We have Anna and B. All right, and we have minute one. She's at zero. A uh, minute zero. She's at zero, and she's at six hundred. Looks good. Minute yeah. one. She made it to two twenty. She made it to eight hundred. Minute two. Four forty. One thousand. And you could just keep on going with this. This is what a child would do. This may not be what you and I would do. To get the answer. But can you see you're on your way? You're going to get there, yeah. right? And if you keep doing it, you will get the answer. And then you can answer these other cute questions if Annie wins. Well, then, in how many minutes does she catch up with B? Which means keep on doing the numbers till they meet, right? So they're equal. That's what that one is. If B wins, how far behind is she when she finishes? So we could keep on going with this. You could even use an Excel spreadsheet to finish this up. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. I'm just curious. That would make it so much easier. I'm going to open Excel. I'm going to do it with Excel, okay? Because this is the, the key to it. And it's just like before. Remember when you saw the coins that we discussed, the nickels and the quarters, and we made yeah. a table, and the table was 40 nickels and zero dimes, then 39 nickels and one dime, right? And it was like every case. That's mm -hmm. what's going on here. It's the same thing. And it, it's like busy work a little bit, but it also will get you to your solution. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and share this now with you. Okay, we're in Excel. Can you see my Excel? Oh, oh yeah. Sorry, I oh. have the other sc your screen bigger, but yeah. No <laughs> That's idea. okay. Take your time. You know, we're all playing with technology here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the numbers in. And I'm going to click it and drag it down. If you click two, it'll carry out the pattern you're asking about, see? Mm -hmm. All right, and then I'm going to, let me put in a new row here. And here I'm going to put our friends Anna and B. And Anna has zero meters completed when B has 600 completed, right? Then the mm -hmm. rate is that she's got 220 going on in minute one. Well, two, and then this one's at 22. Two. Oh, you know what? I keep doing that. Hold on. 220, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this person gets up to 800. Now, I could just go like this. See how quick and easy that was? It's beautiful, right? We'll do this too. Yeah. Now, as a teacher behind the scenes, you're going to open Excel and do this. But get ready for your kids to write this out with a pencil, right? Now the mm -hmm. question is, who's going to win, right? Who's going to win? Well, where is the end of the race? The end of the race is at 10,000. So I only made it to 5,000. Let's carry on here. I'm going to bring all of this down. All three of these. Well, I got to do it like this, I think. And just carry them all down. There you go. All right. Yeah, you passed it. Here it is, right? 47. Ish. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, it was 40, 46. <laughs> 46. Ish. So it was like 45, 45.5. Yeah, and that's what you're going to ask your students to say is somewhere between 45 minutes and 46 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And then you could also argue that this person uh, came in just a minute later, you know, and all that, and you can answer all your questions using it. So Excel is a great tool. I strongly encourage all of you guys to try to use Excel and Desnodes as much as you can. Try to use your brain as little as you can because you have to deal with bigger problems with kids than math. You know, make math e the easy part of your day and, you know, use your energy and your, your you know, the discipline or, or the kids that are crying or the issues that are happening. You know, that's where you got to spend your energy, you know, not on this. Make this easy. Yourself. Is there like an algebraic expression or something I could use if I wanted to? Or like, something like this? Yeah, sure there is. Uh, the algebraic way to go about doing something like this, you have to use D equals RT. Right? And you have mm -hmm. to compare their distances. You have to do it for two separate students. So D equals Daniel. RT? Yeah. And this is distance. Oh, right in time. 
Yeah, and rate and time. Okay, distance and speed and time. All right. Yeah. Right. And so if you start messing around with that, this will all start to come clear and you'll get the same answers you're getting out of the Excel spreadsheet. I uh, do it for each student separately. So for Anna, do it separately. Her distance equals her rate times her time, right? And mm -hmm. you don't know um, what her time is. Uh, you want you want to find out what the time is that she gets to 10,000. So you could say the distance will be 10,000 for this person. And the rate for Anna we were given as 220. And the time is the T. So if you solve this, you'll get the exact precise moment that she crosses the finish line, right? You yeah. do that also for B. And it's a similar equation. I think you could see it's a very easy equation just like this. And then you'll have the exact times when they cross the 10,000 meter finish line, right? And you could say, well, clearly, uh, you know, B did it quicker or whoever did it quicker has like the lower T value. Yeah. So like in um, Webassign, do we have to like round up because it's like a repeating number. It's like 4.54 repeating. Hmm. Um, well, it depends what the question actually is. So let me take a look at your at, at the question that you wrote. Hold on. Um, it was in the chat. Let me go to the chat. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. I need to see it. You know. <laughs> I'm glad that's you wrote it. It makes it easier on me that you wrote it. It makes it easier for me that you wrote it. All right. Um. So the question is actually saying, who wins? So the answer is just one or the other, right? Yeah. Uh, and if Anna wins, then when does she catch up with B? So when does she catch up with B is telling you to solve these two equations, solve them for T, you know? So um, when does she catch up with B? When their T's are equal. So you could say, take the same thing and say T equals D over R, right? Yeah. And then use this to put the D in for B and the rate in for B, and then do it again to put the D in for for uh, Anya and the rating for Anya and set them equal to each other. That would yeah. look kind of like this. Let's see. Mm, running out of paper. Uh, for Anya, D equals to the, the distance is, is uh, the rate we have for 220. So we could say T equals something over 220. The distance, we're asking, um, when does she catch up with B? Oh, when does she catch up with B is when is the distance is equal? That's what that means. When is the distance yeah. equal? So you could change this to, again, be uh, just use the RT and say, when does RT equal RT? It's something like this. I'm kind of drawing a blank right now. Maybe I'm looking at it. Yeah, um, it's fine. I got to go think anyway, I think but you yeah. Okay, right? But you know what it yeah. is, and this is kind of really not the right answer, but the best way and quickest is just get Excel out. <laughs> just get the kids to write a table, <laughs> you know? And before you know it, you have your answer kind of, you know? So yeah. Look at it that way. But you could kind of go around a lot with this algebra, and this is the kind of thing D equals the RT that you kind of stare at a little bit, and you know, you'll, you'll get. But um, I hope that helps you a little bit. Uh, yeah, go right thank to Excel. You. Go right to Excel with it. Oh, you're more than welcome, my friend. But yeah, Excel is your, is your friend with this kind of stuff. I gotta go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, well, I'll see you soon. Have a beautiful day now, Amelia. Take yeah, care of yourself. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye now.